welcome in my wonderful little piles of leaves. I am as always your favourite bear Anakuma and we are here once more on this blustery day to talk about a game that I was gifted on Keymailer which is currently absolutely free on Steam that I think you should all go and play and that game is Leaf Blower Man. Now I completed this game on stream a few weeks back, the VOD should be up by now? And it is one of the reasons I like to put my name down for really random Keymailer games. It was an absolute joy to play, and whilst I need you of you right now in this video, I will say that there are lots of heckin' spoilers here, because the genius of the game would be lost if I didn't talk about the story. So please go play yourself, then come back here and hear me waffle on for 10 or so minutes about why I totally love Leaf Bow Man. In a world where leaves fall from trees, only one man can push them from one end of the driveway to the other. You are that man. Or woman, or non binary, or. Uh, let's try this again. Leaf Blower Person! The game is split up into three sections, but as you start the game, only one of them is available to you. After picking your model out of the three free skins, which is very hard to say, or the one DLC skin, which is also hard to say, you start your life as a simple leaf blower man. The objective of the first part of the level is super simple, just blow the leaves into the green goals on the floor. Sadly, the game also lets you be a chaotic nuisance to the neighbourhood, and whilst you could blast your way quite literally through this area and indeed the entire first part of the game, you end up spending more time destroying the world around you than blowing leaves into circles. Thing is, the actual leaf blowing part of the game is super cathartic, but give me the choice to be a gremlin from the pits of hell and I will stand under the windows at 6am waking people up. That TV will be smashed. You want a relaxing time by the pool, but how about I dunk you in there instead? Obviously there is a quote that goes something like, with great power comes great responsibilities. Whatever. But powered with a leaf blower and the ability to annoy everyone around me, I think we know what is going to win over. After getting through the street, the game takes you down to the subway, but not before ad time. Now yes, this game has ads, and I know some of you will be turning off the video right now. But don't. These ads are fantastic, and tell the story of one man's greed to fill his free game full of ads to make even more money. The ads themselves are hilarious, and you end up trying to make sure that you've seen them all by the end of the game. My favourite might be the walls ad, as well as the potato one but they are all highly amusing. After the game's release, to go along with the ad, he filmed a really funny short to explain why the game was free on Steam. Honestly, the entire story of the CEO, or Chief Exportation Officer as he calls himself, is really well put together satire of the gaming industry right now, that you really wouldn't expect to be hitting you in the face in a free game like this. The ads themselves are well done enough that at first glance you could kind of take them as actual ads, and there are worse things on YouTube than even staring at walls. You can get DLC to take the ads away. I haven't done that to see what happens. In fact, I haven't touched the DLC yet. But again, that is part of the joke. The video they released later explains why the game is free, points to microtransactions and DLC bringing in more money than a one-off game. So they have DLC for everything, including the Sex the Leaves, seeing it was the only negative review they so far had gotten at that point. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you can sex the leaves if you want. Back to the actual game. Not that the ads aren't part of the actual game. We've jumped ahead of ourselves a little more. The second section of the first part of the game takes you into the underground and is much more simple than even the beginning area. There is only one part of the subway that have leaves to blow and it turns out to be probably the coolest place to blow the leaves and that is the train itself. Because it's just a linear path, the effect of the leaves is at its best in the train and you can probably run down it pretty fast, blowing the leaves to make a pretty leaf storm if you wanted. But of course, I must annoy every human my way down the train first. As for the area as a whole, there isn't much to it. You can annoy rats, tear pictures off the walls, and it introduces one of the two enemies that you actually have to defeat and the anti-leaf blowing machines. They will shoot bombs at you and you have to blow them back at the machines. That's about it. When you get back up to the other side, there is a bit of a different leaf blowing area where you have to stop a bank robbery, which is fun. This area really is about story and the story is people hate you. You annoy them. You destroy shit. You are the enemy of the world. That is till you have to go to the moon to stop the leaves on the moon, of course. 
Yes, this game takes you to the moon where you find your second enemy type, tentacles that pop out of the ground and you have to cover their holes with rocks. This is when the story gets pretty bonkers because before now you were just annoying people and blowing leaves. Now the leaves actually are sentient and trying to take over and the only person that can stop that is the hero with the leaf blower. That is you. I will say I really love the fact that the game jumps into a bunch of different game types or is keeping it forever super simple. In the first area, to get to the actual surface of the moon, you have to blow yourself along with the leaf blower avoiding asteroids. It isn't overly simple, but simple enough that you won't get frustrated learning the path to the moon. But this really shows when you get to the second part of the game, because when you return to Earth, the leaves have taken over, and you end up in a horde-like Vampire Survivor-esque game. Out of the entire game, this might be the hardest part. It is a horde-like game where you pick up abilities to help you as you kill the leaves. Even on the second playthrough, the first time I got to the point where the plants just kind of encircle you, I died hor a horrible death. There is an achievement to finish this without taking any hits, and I feel it is doable, but very hard. It lasts for a set amount of time before the boss, the King Leaf, shows up and honestly made me realise why people enjoy these horde type games. The more abilities I got, the stronger I felt, and the easier it was to kill huge areas of enemies. It made me feel super powerful, and nearly made me go out and actually buy one of the many games like this I've seen people play on stream, and never bothered to buy. Even the boss is pretty fun. It isn't really hard, but you do have to learn the attack patterns, and the second you do, then you will have a pretty easy time of it. With the king down, it is time to go into the third part, where the world is on fire and the leaves have trapped into a tiny corner of the town. We can bring the leaves and people back together, do a few RPGs quests before heading to the true enemy of the game. This is where it all goes a little meta. The world is obviously dying. When you help the leaves, the CEO shows up to ask where you're helping them and mentions how much he brought the assets for, and so on. It is a really clever final level where you end up fighting the CEO who is represented by a giant formation of TVs that throw bombs at you. Again, this boss isn't too hard. Nothing in the third level was that difficult. More time wasting and padding out, but on purpose. The ads tell you as they slowly glitch out, the point is to pad the game out to get more ads in. They are very bog standard quests found in RPGs. You'll be doing things you've already done just to push the story towards the final goal. And then when you beat the boss, that's it. The world at this point is very self-aware. The people don't want you to exit the game because they won't exist anymore and you can pick to return or to end the game. This entire game is packed so nicely into this weirdly interesting story that starts off as nothing more than some chaotic and fun leaf blower adventure into saving the world from evil leaves, uniting humans and leaves together, and defeating the true horrors of CEOs that only look at their profit line. The game does also advertise another game that the creator Unbound Creations has made called Rain On Your Parade, and it honestly looks like their games are all about just being super witty and fun. It shows that you can make a really good game that satirizes so many things that people genuinely have big problems with in the gaming sphere without making yourself look like a pretentious git was doing it. The way they deliver the comedy in the game is so well done that you get their point right off the bat but don't necessarily feel the need to engage with that just continue enjoying the game as it is presented. I am curious at how the remove ad DLC works, whether it just really takes it all away or if they insert something else but I wouldn't really want to play the game without the ads as they are the integral part of the story and actually some of the best comedy I've seen in a long time. Honestly, I loved everything about this game as well. I know a few people in my chat went out that day and played it themselves even though they had just watched me complete it and I can understand why people won't care if they know the story but want to explore it themselves. The game looks fun and it plays super well. There are no awkward controls and it isn't overcomplicated. You just press your button to blow your leaf blower then go. I loved all the areas we were shoved into, even the horde mode, which is bleak like most of them tend to be, gave life to these leaves pretty well. The RPG area really showed that these guys can build interesting worlds as well. So many different genres felt represented in the very short game, and each were done with a lot of love and care to them, making each part of the game super replayable, even if they are short. I cannot stress enough that this game is currently free on Steam, and you can breeze through it in an hour or so. It really is worth the time you invest in it, and I'm honestly looking forward to playing more games by these guys and seeing what other wild rides they will take us for. That, sadly, is all I have time for today. I've really enjoyed a lot of the Keymailer games that I've had this year. I'm currently still playing one on and off on stream at the moment, which is 3 minutes to 8. 
And if you want to check that out, I'm over on twitch.tv forward slash worker89 four days a week on a Monday, Wednesday, Saturday and Sunday at 1pm British time doing all sorts of games. We have a great community, so as always, I would appreciate a follow over there as well as the sub and a like over here on YouTube. I am a broken record, so I will say once more that I know that this channel is where I basically just dump all of my VODs, but I hope that this surge in video since Halloween might keep going. Again, I have a few ideas in the works for a few different reviews coming up. I have some longer series I'm working on as well, and I'm also thinking of bringing back Twitch highlights, which become a bit of a sore spot after the last Digimon one, but now with my new PC and a new outlook on everything, hopefully I, I can get back to it. Not only that, but I've also been playing random games off stream on my Discord, which is linked below in the description, which I've also been recording for future videos. I've become oddly productive recently, and whilst it does take me a while to switch my brain into gear to write scripts and edit up videos, I'm hoping that I can push through and get some work out on a consistent basis. But for now, that is all I have to say. Hit us up on Twitch, where we'll blow your mind with leaf puns, quite often if you ask for it and complain about ads pretty often as well until next time thank you for watching and bye bye <laughs>